I'm Ashlyn and my husband is Zach and we're traveling A to Z. Join us as we go explore Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. We're heading to the Petrified Forest. We just got here. It's about 7.20. It says it was supposed to be open earlier online, but it says 8. We're currently in the Northeast Arizona, which is kind of where the Petrified Forest is, about 50 miles from the New Mexico border. We're entering through the north entrance at Painted Desert Visitor Center. Old gas pumps and an old car on Route 66. This is right outside the visitor center at the start of the Petrified Forest. Currently we're at Tawa Point and behind me you could see the Painted Mountains. And then you could see the lodge all the way over there. They used to use the lodge as like a place where people stay, but now it's a museum and they don't have anyone staying there. In 1987, it became a national monument. So there was a volcano over there someplace and when it erupted, it deposited basalt along the surface here. So if you look over on this side, you see black basalt like a couple of feet thick along the top of the canyon and where the basalt has been worn away, the softer red rock underneath has been eroded, and that's where the canyon came from. They're finding fossils from the Triassic period, which is the earliest dinosaur time, uh, about 200 million years ago. And they're down there in the desert someplace, and I guess they're still finding it. So that's kind of cool. We're currently at Pintado Point and it has a nice overview. So over here in the distance, you can see the San Francisco, well, no, you can't see the San Francisco peaks because there's smog and I think there's like a forest fire, but you can imagine peaks in the distance. And then right over here, in, you see kind of this pilot rock, which is the big rock in the center. And then there's little pinnacles sticking up. And then all the way over here, you could see where there was a lithodendron rosh, which you could see was probably like a little river. You could see the flat point right in there. Um, and then in the way distance over there, the Chinga Mesa, which you could see also. It's a pretty good view. It's pretty dry right now, but apparently there's a pond around here that you could hike to. We're not gonna hike to it, but it's amazing there's even water here. It's it just, it's hot and dry. This is Nizani Point. It's another point along the road. Uh, not only are they finding dinosaur fossils, they're finding a lot of artifacts from the Native Americans that used to live here, such as bulls and arrowheads and stuff. Um, over here in the distance, way over there on the top, there's like a little hill. And that was the cinder cone. That is where the volcano was and erupted that formed everything we're seeing right now. That's also the highest point in the park. You can't get to the top because it's um, only authorized vehicles, unfortunately. Here we are at Lacey Point. It's named after the guy that made this the second national monument. And they did it because of all the archeological and fossil resources around. Our next stop is to the old Route 66. Well, this is a 19 something or other Studebaker. This is the old Route 66 and cars like this used to drive on it. Um, Route 66 opened in 1926 or something like that through the 1950s and these telephone poles right here are the old original Route 66 line. Um, yeah. If she had an engine she'd still be running. This is also the only national park where a road went through, a major road, in the whole United States. And if you look, you can see where the new road has been formed on the other side of the telephone poles, so they no longer use this. Here we are at Puerco Pueblo. We're <laughs> going for a walk. It's a 0.3 mile walk to the Pueblo and Petroglyphs around here. So this is what they thought the Pueblo looked like. They're thinking it's a square, building with the center in the middle. Here's some of the old Pueblos. So this 
is part of the walls in the small rooms of the, uh, the Pueblo. You can see some of the old petroglyphs. That's a migration symbol, which is kind of the zigzag. Kachina symbol. So there's some more petroglyphs with humans and a bird eating a frog. Maybe a turtle, I don't know what that is. You can see in this little tiny picture. So this rock is a marker for the summer solstice. And so it's set up where the sun hits through these cracks and it'll hit this other rock during the two times a year where the solstice occurs. So that's pretty neat. And you could see on that rock, there's like a little foot and handprint. Um, but that is the summer solstice rock. This is a kiva. Uh, we were just in Mesa Verde and all the kivas there are round. This one has kind of a square outline, which is kind of different. So we're at Newspaper Rock. There's over 650 petroglyphs on this rock here. It's actually part of the historic protected site because of the high density of it. It has the most petroglyphs in the park here than anywhere else in the park. Our next stop is to the Blue Mesa. From the parking lot, you have gorgeous views of the rock formations down below. On top of the mountain, you can see a petrified log, and down below, you can see pieces of the petrified log. So we're going for a hike on the Blue Mesa. The hike is a one mile loop that gains 114 feet elevation. So all around us, you could see where the volcanic ash was formed, all the white and the blue colored. You could see the cracks in it that look like elephant skin because as it rains, it expands and as it dries, it constricts and then it forms these little fissures and cracks all along the mountains that you're seeing. Still hiking on the Blue Mesa. We've actually dropped off the Blue Mesa a little bit and there's some petrified wood over there. There's pieces of petrified wood all over the park as you walk. Our next stop is Agate Bridge. Agate Bridge. A tree fell down and then fossilized, and then the ground started to erode underneath it, forming this bridge. We're now visiting Jasper Forest, which has some of the largest accumulation of petrified wood in the world. This is one of the major stops in the 1900s by the railroad so people could visit this location. We just made it to Crystal Forest. We're going to do the loop. It's about a 0.8 mile loop. It's supposed to be fairly flat and it's supposed to take us through the Badlands and lots of different areas with petrified wood. This place has petrified wood like all over it. Pretty cool. These are some big logs, and it's pretty neat because you can still see the bark on the trees. I love all the colors of the different petrified wood pieces. I think this used to be a redwood. Hey, look how big this thing is. Our next stop is to the Rainbow Forest Museum, which is one of the earliest facilities in the National Park. This museum is really neat. It has a lot of artifacts and lots of fossils that were found in this area. They also have informational boxes with different bones in them. Our next stop is to hike the Giant Logs Trail. Now we're doing a little trail right behind the Rainbow Visitor Center. And it's supposed to have some nice petrified logs around with a nice little easy hike. How big this tree is. It's huge. It's taller than me. It's pretty impressive. And it goes all the way down. So this is our last hike in Petrified Forest and we're doing the Long Logs and Agate House. The whole hike is around 2.4, 2.6 miles if you do both loops. So we're going to go out to the Long 
logs first, go to the agate house and then come back. So this is an old remnant of agate house. So a house made out of petrified wood. Pretty crazy. So instead of using bricks or adobe or anything like that, they actually used the wood from the petrified wood, which is really hard. And you can see it's a lot of it's still standing today. So the house was thought to be built between 10,050 and 1300. It's a long time ago. It's amazing it's still looking as good as it does. And it was a lot bigger. You can see in the picture here. It had about eight different rooms and an entry. It was the largest structure of its time. Heading to Long Logs Trail. It's supposed to loop back around. This is a pretty good drill though. You just have all this wood beside you, petrified wood everywhere. So we're still looking for the long log. We think this might be it, but we're not really sure. There's a lot of long logs out here. There's some big trees here once upon a time. on the trail map. Um, we feel like we sufficiently saw the park. I thought it was a cool park, but I really kind of like the deserts and I think the petrified forest and trees were really cool. I thought the petrified forest and trees were really cool. They had a really neat dinosaur exhibit in there. Um, I'm not that excited about deserts, so I could do without the desert park, but the petrified wood was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed exploring Petrified Forest National Park with us. Please subscribe below to follow more of our adventures.